Hey everyone, today I'm really excited about this episode because I am going to be answering some audience questions and I particularly had a short countdown timer because I just want to dive in and start to answer some of these. One of the reasons I'm doing this is I often see common questions that are coming through, whether that's on YouTube comments or people are reaching out directly to me. You have questions about some of the content that I put out there and I want you to have the answers, but I also realize if I answer individually to each person and I'm answering the same questions, it's probably better if I come here and share the answers with all of you because you're probably wondering about them. So that is what we are going to do today. I just realized that my pedal is out of reach. Here we go. Nope. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be one of those Fridays. Who knows? I'm answering questions. And if you are new, if you're not familiar, you haven't met me before. My name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And that is what we are doing today is answering some questions so that you can overcome roadblocks so that you can create wonderful presentations that really elevate and take it to the next level. I've broken it down into a few categories. So the topics we are going to cover today, we've got Zoom, OBS, teleprompters, and also got some questions about audio routing. Now I do want to preface to say I am going to be doing a specific video on Ecamm's new virtual microphone, which was recently released, which is really exciting. That is for the pro plan. I'll do a deeper dive, but we will actually talk about that today. So those, these are the topics that we are going to cover. And I'm also, I'm hoping I can answer the collected questions with enough time to also be able to answer some audience questions. So I want to say welcome to everyone who's joining me live today for this session. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's dive into this. Although I think I just realized, I thought I set up a scene right, but I'm not sure it is. So we're going to find out on the fly what what's going on there. Okay, so this is a question I get a lot, and it is around switching cameras in Zoom. So one of my, I'd say, I think actually it's the most popular video on my channel is about setting up your Stream Deck to operate Zoom. And one of the things that I've noticed is people will say, well, do I need to have a software like OBS or like Ecamm or vMix to be able to switch? And can I just switch cameras using the Stream Deck with Zoom? So the short answer is you can put in a shortcut so that you can switch between cameras, but there are some common issues with that. So let's see if this setup works with sharing my screen. Oh, that is the wrong one. <laughs> That's my preview. I had a, I had a suspicion. Here we go. No, what is happening? My monitors are mixed up. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there with that setup. So yeah, this is live and exciting. Also, I am recovering <laughs> from being sick. So you might hear it in my voice. And also, maybe that's why this is starting off as a little bit of a train wreck today. All right, so when you are in Zoom, and I don't have my camera turned on right now, but if we pop down to the bottom here, you will see all of the cameras that are available. Also, if you open preferences, you will also see all of the preferences that are available as well. Right now, you can see with this example, I have an Ecamm Live virtual camera. So literally, I would bring in what you're seeing now. Uh, would be what if I pick that you would see exactly what I'm streaming right now it would show up in zoom so it's the virtual camera I also have my cam link which is the camera I'm looking into right now but that is unedited really really wide I also have my built-in FaceTime camera and I have a webcam so an overhead camera so for example if we were to pick this camera and actually turn on the camera you'll see my overhead view this is my over-the-shoulder shot is now coming in. If I use the shortcut, which for a Mac, the shortcut is Command Shift N, which I do actually have programmed. If I do this, you're going to see, oh, there's my FaceTime camera. So I've just switched cameras and I'm actually gonna not do the last one because it's gonna create an, a loop effect. But you can see that there is a shortcut, but the drawback is it's going to cycle through every single camera you have attached or that, that Zoom recognizes. And that is where I personally don't use that. 
Let's say though, you only have two cameras that are showing up in your camera switcher. So maybe you don't have a virtual camera, you have your primary camera and maybe a secondary camera. You can absolutely use that shortcut and you can have that programmed or you can just use the shortcut to quickly switch between cameras. So maybe you're doing a cooking demonstration over Zoom and it's just either you or the overhead and those are the only two cameras that Zoom can pick up. 100% you can have a shortcut to just toggle back and forth between those two cameras. So if you are like me and you have more cameras and you don't wanna to toggle through, that is where I highly recommend that you actually get the, uh, use something fr like free like OBS where you can set up two scenes or three scenes depending on how many cameras and each scene is that camera. So you bring in the virtual camera to zoom and then you use the shortcut just to switch between your scenes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a video on how to set up your virtual camera and also how to set up scenes in OBS. And you would just be setting up scenes with your different cameras. That's all there is to it. That is personally what I would recommend. But if you have a really simple setup and all you're actually seeing in there is your couple of cameras that you wanna switch between, then use that shortcut. And as a reminder, when you go into Zoom preferences, you can see in the menu, all your keyboard shortcuts, they are all there. All right, that's the first one. The second question related to Zoom, which is a common one, <laughs> is around resolution. So I've had people reach out and say, you know, do I have to use screen sharing? Like, can't I just use this virtual camera and just bring exactly what I'm showing in my streaming software into Zoom? And the answer is, if you have a regular Zoom account, that resolution is not going to be good enough. If you have a Zoom account where you have 1080 enabled, then yes, you can set up a scene where you're showing maybe you plus a screen share. So for example, the scene that I was just on, which I'm now realizing it's not named right, but if I go back to this scene, if I had, let's say details on this website, or even if you look at the bottom of this menu, uh, for Zoom, this would be really blurry if I just brought this into a regular Zoom meeting. And so you want to really take a look at what it is that you're trying to share through Zoom. And I would say if it's pretty big print, even this, this print right now that I have here, I wouldn't necessarily wanna do this on a regular resolution of Zoom, which we're talking really low, maybe 360. Um, I have now with Zoom, I've reached out, I said that I present, I use Ecamm and I'm like, this is my job. And they have turned on 720, which is your standard high definition. It is not the highest quality. Obviously you would wanna aim for an account that has 1080. There are some sort of bulk purchase buying plans, meaning, uh, so for, for example, professionals who work as a solo entrepreneur, they don't have a team, they don't need the team plan, they don't need the business plan. You can join them, so you kind of become part of their team, so you have access to their high quality 1080, so you, you buy into it. That is an option for someone if you are looking not to share. What I would personally do is have maybe my big print, you know, have things that are really visible, use that 720, and I would reach out to Zoom and ask about 720. I feel like they've gotten a little bit more, I don't want to say liberal, but before I got shot down before, but now um, <laughs> I did finally, finally got accepted for having 720 enabled on my account and have that, that group HD turned on. So I would do that. But if you are showing something that's detailed, if you're showing a spreadsheet or if you are showing a website and you want it to be clear, I would use the screen sharing for that purpose. So really the answer is, if you've got high definition on your account, you can test it, make sure that it's working. There are some other things you need to keep in mind with HD, so having full screen, speaker view, etc. But otherwise, if it's just fine detail, I say just share with the screen. It is just going to be your best bet for resolution. Okay, let's see. The next question, this one is about overlays and backgrounds. So I've had a few people reach out and say, yeah, it's great. I set up my OBS. I've got my overlays. For example, this would be, sorry, <laughs> getting over there, getting over that sickness. So what would happen is you, if I set up this, for example, and I wanted to bring this into a Zoom meeting and I wanted to have this question at the bottom of my screen in Zoom, I would set this up in a scene and then I would bring it into Zoom using the virtual camera. But let's say I wanted to, you know, 
fuzz out my background or I wanted a virtual background. Maybe I'm in a spot that I don't want to be showing my background. Maybe it's really distracting or maybe there are other people in the background. I want to make sure I can blur that out. Those two things don't go well together. <laughs> so if I bring in this, the, the computer that is trying to blur out my background, it's looking for the human and it wants to blur out everything else. So overlays graphics from an outside bringing them in do not go with the virtual background in zoom or other there you know they all have them now so no <laughs> the answer is they don't play well together so that actually i mean that's the simple answer is no the ai that's trying to just identify the person is not going to play well with your overlays but and you don't necessarily need a green screen which leads me to my next question, which is, oh, did I? I don't think it updated. Okay, well, the next question, that's embarrassing, guys. Did it, yeah, I didn't update the wording. So the wording for my next question is, can I get a virtual background like Zoom in OBS? And the answer is yes, you can. So let's go over here to this screen share, which Zoom is now being funny. Um, okay, so we'll go over to this share screen. So this is a plugin. So in my research on, can I bring a virtual background into OBS? So you've got your virtual background and you have your overlays and then bring those in to your Zoom or Teams or whatever you're using. This is a plugin that is for free and it is available for OBS. There are tutorials on the web if you look up OBS background removal. So when you go to the actual site, this will bring you to have what you need in order to get the, the you can download for your program. Um, so this is the OBS plugin and there are some directions on how to use it. You would be basically creating your own virtual green screen and then you add it in. So it is like generating a green screen. So if you see this little introduction, then you'll be able to see that he creates a green screen and then you apply your chroma key and then you can put whatever background you want. So whether you want to have just a standard background or maybe you want to have um, a little bit of animation in the background, whatever it is you choose, obviously you need to supply your own background, but that is going to give you a virtual background. You're essentially kind of loading your own plugin that's using similar technology to what Zoom and Teams and the other web conferencing software are using. And so you're just creating it yourself and then you're bringing that in with the virtual camera. So that is one of your options. So you are looking for OBS background removal. That's the one I found. You can do some research for other, for other ones. Um, I haven't tested it, I will say that, but I've watched tutorials and it does look like it does what people are asking for it to do. Okay, let's go to the next question. How do I bring multiple guests into OBS? So I do have a video on how to use Skype and I gave an example, I brought one person in using Skype and NDI, but someone said, how do I bring in more? And also after I made that video, a lot of people said, well, have you tried Ninja? So it's a an OBS, um, I guess not really like a plugin because it's it's it complements and works with our uh, with OBS and it is also free and you can bring in your guests using a browser URL and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in here our very own Patrick from Everyday Tech is let's see if this works there we go I'm gonna put this in the chat so. Everyday Tech, Patrick, has a wonderful tutorial on how do you bring in guests using, it's called, it used to be called OBS Ninja, it's now called VDO Ninja for OBS, and I highly recommend this tutorial because he walks through what it is, how to set it up, how to invite people, and actually does have an example bringing in a guest, and talking to the guest, and what are some of the things you need to know, how do you set up their audio, all of that is covered by Patrick, he does a great job, so I would Highly recommend checking that out because I know there are people who are interested in bringing in guests, maybe doing a panel in OBS, bringing that into Zoom or using that to stream, whatever it is you decide to do. And I think that this would be a great option. And I don't have a video on this, so I'm highly recommending that you check out Patrick's video. It is in the chat. 
and it is VDO, VDO Ninja. So that is what you want to check out. That will enable you to bring in your multiple guests. Okay, next question. Can I have gallery view in my teleprompter? So a lot of people want a teleprompter for running Zoom meetings because they want to be able to see all the people directly in front of them. They want to look at the camera and they want to see everyone's reactions. That's the biggest drawback when I tell people make eye contact with the camera when people are talking. Look at the camera so that they know that you are listening to them. And they'll, they'll get panicky and say, but I need to see everyone's reaction. <laughs> and I would say that you don't. <laughs> you can kind of hear it in their voice and you can glance. It's okay to glance down. But if you buy a teleprompter, that is one of the advantages is you can look into the camera and you can see what's going on. There are a couple of things I want to share. One is that in order, you can absolutely put Zoom into gallery and bring that up in front of you. That will have the controls for Zoom in your teleprompter, which depending on the size of your teleprompter and your eye vision, <laughs> your, your eyesight, that can be challenging to actually manage a meeting from the teleprompter. The drawback, if you use the dual monitors, so when you go into Zoom preferences, one of the first things under general that you can check or uncheck is something called dual monitors. Dual monitors allows you to have all the controls of the meeting, maybe on your main camera or your main monitor. And then you could have the active speaker view in front of you in your teleprompter, but it doesn't default to the gallery view in my experience. Let me know in the chat if you have ever found that to be different. But in my experience, when you have dual monitors, that second monitor that doesn't have any of the controls, it's always the active speaker view. Now, if you really want to see people's reactions while they're speaking, that's a great option to have directly in front of you. If though you really want to see the full gallery of people in front of you, you either bring that up in front of you and it'll be in front of you in the teleprompter, but so will the controls. That's where it can help to have some shortcuts. Or you could mirror your main monitor to your teleprompter. So whatever you see on the main screen, you can actually mirror that instead of extending your, your teleprompter monitor. That's another option. Now I am speaking about having a monitor that's connected to your computer that actually acts, extends or mirrors or duplicates sort of what you see. If you have a separate device, for example, if you have an iPad that is not connected at all, theoretically you could use the iPad to call into the meeting as well, have that on gallery view and then you're controlling the meeting in front of you. So those are some of your options. I would say it's totally natural to glance away from the camera and to check on what people are saying and play around with it. One of the other things that I do when I have my meetings in gallery view in front of me is I will bump up the, or actually decrease the resolution on my teleprompter. So everything is a little bit bigger. When it's a really high resolution on your teleprompter, everything is going to be smaller and depending on how far away your teleprompter is or maybe how dark it is because it's trying to shade it, it's not always easy to see. The other thing I'll say about the teleprompter, which is actually connected to the next question, should I use a teleprompter or just use another monitor, which is a totally fair question. You're trying to maximize, you know, if you're, if you're running a presentation or you're running a meeting and you want to see everyone, should you have a teleprompter where you can't really fit everything you want to see directly in front of you? You're going to have to look around. So if I'm going to do that anyway, why don't I maybe just have another monitor that has more screen real estate and just have just, you know, look at the camera when I'm speaking and make sure that I'm looking at it. I'm just pretending I'm looking somewhere else. And then you can glance down at your screen. This is totally a personal preference. And I would say something you need to know is that the closer you are to physically to your camera, so if I reach, getting pretty close with my finger there towards the camera, that's about how far I can, I can touch almost. From where I am right now, it's basically just over an arm's length. In order for me to reach the camera, I actually have to lean forward a little, but that's the distance. And the closer you are to your camera, the more visible your eye movements will be. So if you, even if I'm looking at my teleprompter and I'm starting to look off at this person talking up, up in the corner, 
it's obvious I'm not looking at the camera because I'm pretty close to my camera. So if you are close to your camera, when you glance away, even if you're looking at a teleprompter, if you're looking at other parts of the teleprompter, I'm looking around only at stuff in my teleprompter, but my eyes are moving all over. Whereas if your teleprompter is farther back, those it's, it's less noticeable because your, your eye movements, it's not as dramatic because you're not as close. So it's all about the angles. It's, it's geometry. <laughs> and I definitely almost took down my over the shoulder webcam just now by swinging my arms around with this geometry. So that's something you want to consider when it comes to your setup. So no matter what, you want to practice making eye contact with your camera. Even when I am on a meeting, let's say, you know, uh, yesterday I had a meeting. There were five of us in it. I had everyone on the teleprompter with Zoom in the teleprompter. And if I'm on speaker view, it's great because they're right in the center. But as soon as I'm on gallery view, if I actually want to look at their faces, I have to scan my eyes in different places and I'm no longer making eye contact with the camera. So most of the time, even when something's on my teleprompter, I'm still just kind of staring at the center. And it's nice to have the stuff there. Like right now I can see the question on my screen, but if I glance around, you're gonna notice it. So you have to know that, I think, or I think it's important to understand that because if you watch something back and think, oh, I'm not actually making eye contact, what's going on? All this to say, when you're making the decision between do I have a teleprompter or do I maybe instead have another monitor that's maybe bigger that I can see everything I need to see to run my meeting or event or live stream and just be able to glance at it but mostly focus on the camera. If you are comfortable and you practice looking at that camera, you're golden. <laughs> you, you're not gonna stare straight forward 100% of the time you are going to look around. It's a natural thing to do. So you're going to spread it out. You know, if we look at my overhead, which I think is here. Yeah. I glance down. I can see the comments and I can see my stream quality here. I've got the page that I wanted to show people for the website over here. I'm going to look at these screens and I'm also going to look up there. I'm gonna try and look at my camera as much as possible. So whether there's a teleprompter there or not, I'm going to be trying to look at the center of that camera as much as possible. <laughs> so I know I'm not totally answering that question, but I think I just want you to consider that your eyes are gonna move around. You can't fit everything on a tiny screen. That's impossible. <laughs> Even if you did, you'd probably be scanning all around of it, it, it and it would your eyes are moving all around anyway. So practice staring at the center of the camera. It's okay to have your stuff spread out and it's a personal choice whether or not you want a teleprompter, but don't rely on having a teleprompter if you plan on like reading everything off the screen, et cetera. It should be helping you. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be I don't know, having to read every single thing and constantly scanning over it. That might be almost more awkward for your audience personally. That's my opinion. So I would say, look at that camera, look in the center as much as possible. All right, next question that I collected is, how do I get sound effects into whether I'm doing, maybe set up some scenes, I'm doing a recording, or I have a Zoom meeting and I've got sound effects and maybe you've, play, you've put some sound effects on your stream deck, for example, and you play a sound effect and it's not, in your recording or it's not in the Zoom meeting, what is going on? This is where you need to get into audio routing, meaning you need to make sure that whatever you are using to record what it is that you're recording or bring into Zoom, that it's not just your mic. For example, if we, let's go back to my Zoom meeting. I believe it is still, I believe it's still loaded. Maybe not, maybe it got closed. Okay, we're gonna, Oh, back to meeting. Yeah, here we go. So let's go back to this meeting. Okay, so we've got this meeting here. And when we go down to this bottom, and I recognize that this is kind of small. <laughs> now I've opened this huge thing here. Uh, let me move this over so that my head isn't getting in the way. There we go. So if we look at this menu, you can see the microphones and the speakers. So the microphone is where we want to focus. And in my case right now, if I was in a Zoom meeting, I'm going directly into 
my microphone only, which is the Rodecaster Pro. Now the Rodecaster Pro, if you have one, you can actually play sound effects in the Rodecaster. Those would come through to my Zoom meeting. Or if I was using the Rodecaster Pro to record something, if I press a button on there, play a sound effect, you'll hear both my voice and the sound effect. But if you are playing your sound effect from something else, you want to route your audio. And I do have a video, it's on loopback, but the concept of audio routing is described there where I'm creating a virtual microphone that combines different audio sources. So I have loopback, which is a, an audio routing software for Mac, and that has a cost to it. And now I have the Ecamm Live virtual microphone, which is a new feature for the pro plan. So it is also paid. If you are a pro Ecamm user, then it's included. And so that is an option that you have. So these are two, what we call audio routing options. And you would be able to bring the sound in to your recording or into your Zoom meeting. So if you play a sound effect, if you play a video, that's got music or audio, or if you've got a scene that is set up that has music, those will all come into either Zoom or the other source. So you do need an option like that, which I do have a question that someone said, have you tried the VB cables for audio routing? The answer is no. <laughs> I know that's a bit of a bummer question. I'm like, here's a question I get, the answer is no. But I do, people have asked me a number of times, have you tried the VB cables? I haven't. I decided to loop back seemed to me more intuitive and I decided to try it and it worked. However, I do now have the option as an Ecamm Pro user to use the Ecamm Live virtual mic, which works if you're bringing sources into Ecamm. So Ecamm acts like your router. So if I have a video in Ecamm, if I played a video right now, or if I add music to this scene or I play a sound effect, that's going to all funnel to wherever I'm sending Ecamm. But if you are using something like OBS or maybe you're using something else to record videos, you would want to make sure that those sounds are all kind of chosen together. So loopback is still, in my opinion, a helpful thing to have if I'm playing a source from somewhere else. Let's say that I was running a Zoom meeting and I want to open a browser and play sound from directly from the browser into the Zoom meeting. I could use my virtual mic through loopback because I can choose the browser as an audio source as I'm sort of building that virtual microphone. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'd say if you're not clear on audio routing, I would check out my loopback video, even if you're not a Mac user, if you were just getting familiar, because I do have an animation that shows the concept of creating a virtual mic and that you're really just combining those sources into one and then you can just pick that virtual that virtual microphone and into whatever it is that you are recording or your Zoom meeting. Now I feel like I'm repeating myself, so I'm going to pause there. So those are actually all of the questions that I collected it, that I noticed were popping up or that had come into me directly and I knew other people were going to be curious about them. So I want to want to go to this chat um, for all the people who are with me and see, do we have any questions here? So I see a question from John. So let's actually, let's go back and find John's question so I can put it up on the screen. Okay. So with the new virtual mic, I'm assuming Ecamm virtual mic, do I still need loopback if I use a playlist for Zoom party. So this is where, and I'm going to do a specific video just on how to use the Ecamm virtual microphone and have an example, bring it into Zoom. It has, so the audio, if the audio is in Ecamm, it will, if it's in the scene, it will play in your source. If however, it's somewhere completely separate and you don't bring it in, it's if you connect the Ecamm virtual mic to Zoom, and you play music, just say on your computer from a music player, like you're playing Spotify or Apple Music, that is not going to be heard unless it goes into Ecamm first. So Ecamm would be sort of your router where you're collecting the audio sources and then bring it in. So it's not a fully robust, it's not an audio router software. It's a streaming software that now has a virtual mic option 
because a lot of people will put music in scenes or they'll put a video in scenes. And up until now, you've had to you've had to use a third party software like Loopback or VB Audios. And now you don't have to do that, which is fantastic that they rolled out that option. So hopefully that makes sense and answers your question. And okay. All right, let's see. All right. Oh, I'm just going to say that's awesome, Stefan, that you had uh, that it ran smoothly. I always love hearing when things run smoothly, but things don't always run smoothly and that's okay too. <laughs> so just want to put that out there. Uh, also, hi, Andy. Thanks for joining. First time joining. It's great to see you here. Okay, so... I see a comment here, using OBS Ecamm to switch cameras rather than Zoom has the advantage that you can do them. Same thing with Teams. So yeah, if you set up scenes with those cameras, you can do them, you can do that anywhere. And I th and you feel like you have more control. And oops, I went into demo. <laughs> uh, let's, how do I, mm, there. <laughs> the button was right beside my comment. So you just got a little, demo mode. <laughs> also, I'm not trimming this. I'm going to add chapters to this, but I'm not going to trim it so that the live stream will still be there. It's also why I had a, a 30 second countdown knowing I was not going to trim this video and just I'm going to add the chapters so the questions are all marked. So just uh, putting that out there. Is there a way to lock in speaker view on Zoom. So when you are on Zoom, you can have this spotlight. So I would say the spotlight feature is the the best way to have that. So spotlight will have it so that you, all, like whoever spotlighted, they're going to be in speaker view, both for you and for your audience. So that is the go-to. Whereas if you were to just maybe pin something, so you, and if you just for yourself, you could pin your view and have it in speaker, but that really spotlight, I think, would be the best option for that. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want this to, to go into speaker for everyone, you want to you use the spotlight option. That is what we do for training, and it works pretty, pretty well. Okay. Um, and spotlight will stay spotlighted, whoever it is. So I see the follow-up, you know, if... If it's you and then someone else, it'll shift. But if you spotlight, it'll stay on that person. But I would say for everyone who's running a workshop and you're recording it, remember if you want the recording to show a person speaking. So if you, let's say you open up the floor to questions and someone's asking a question, if you still have the spotlight on, the recording will just have you listening to that person. That's awkward. <laughs> so I would say if and unless you want to be showing, just remember when you're sp spotlighted, spotlit, that you think about the recording. What do you want to show on the recording? If you want it to be yours, stay stay with the spotlight. If you don't, then make sure that you toggle that off and then it will just be in regular speaker view and whoever is speaking will be the one who is highlighted. Okay. And... Yeah, I think when it comes to the gallery for teleprompter, if it's really, if you have a seven inch kind of teleprompter monitor, it just might be too small. It's great for speaker view. I think even gallery, I don't know. I have a 10 inch monitor for my teleprompter, which is a decent size, but it can get small. That's why I usually decrease the resolution on my teleprompter so I can see it. Um, okay, so which camera? Okay. So right now I am using the Sony ZV-1 camera as my primary. So that's the one that I've got connected with my teleprompter. I also have this guy, which is not in a setup right now because I'm using it more in a portable fashion. This is the Sony ZV-E10. It came out a year later, approximately. And the nice thing about this one is that it has an interchangeable lens, whereas the one I'm using right now, which is the Sony ZV-1 or ZV-1, depending on what country you live in, that is, you cannot change that lens, but I do, I am happy with it and it works just great for streaming. So uh, there we have it. And I do have a tech list 
that has a list of everything and I think I'll just pop it. Will this work? There, I've got my gear there. Put it in the chat. Okay. Okay. Oh, and it looks like someone else helped out and mentioned the spotlight. <laughs> All right. So I see here, find it. Do you have a resource for locating great Zoom admin gigs? I don't. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good question, but I don't have it. All right. Um, all right, let's look out. So Tommy was mentioning VB cables. So for audio routing for VB, uh, the, it's a little more difficult or it's less intuitive. And that is the main thing I've heard from feedback from friends who've used VB audio is that, or the VB cables, is you have to specifically remember what is what and whereas the interface with loopback is I would say pretty intuitive well uh, yes and no <laughs> I had definitely had to watch tutorials of like what goes where what to name things and once I figured it out that's why I made a video on it because I, I would say while it is more user-friendly it is it still takes I wouldn't have been able to probably figure it out on my own. I still would have needed some help to get set up. <laughs> All right. And, oh, that's great to know, Sandy, that Spotlight is also in Teams. So, yeah, I know you can kind of um, pin there. It's been a while since I've used that. And so we've got a question here. I have Loopback, Ecamm, Veeam, Virtual Mic, Black Hole, and NDI. Do you have an option to best practice? Uh, I, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, I probably can't come up with a, a good answer on the fly. I, yeah, it really depends on what you are trying to do, what is the right thing for you to use. I would say I'm really curious about the Ecamm. So I have noticed with Loopback, and I have not had time to explore what's going on, but when I'm in a Zoom meeting and I'm on my microphone, like if I'm just going into this guy, which oh, it's just kind of tucked down a little bit lower, but when I'm just using the mic, I've got my audio sounds at a good level where I like them. When I use loopback and I have music, my mic goes lower, and I do not know. It's at 100% in loopback. I'm not sure what's going on. The reason I like having loopback as an option is I can just kind of start and stop a playlist. So I have... I. I really do like to use stream beats for workshops because it's copyright free and, uh, and it's got kind of a lot of good I mean, just background music because it doesn't have any lyrics. And I like that I can just start and stop the playlist. And so I bring in the playlist into loopback, but I'm really frustrated with the levels of my mic because I don't know why that's happening. So if anyone has an answer, let me know. But I think what I'll probably do instead is kind of set up some scenes with actual media files attached to those scenes. For example, a welcome scene or a breakout room or not breakout room, but, you know, I'll have a countdown timer with you've got five minutes to do this exercise. Just have songs and they'll just start playing when I go to that scene and try the virtual mic instead because I have found that very frustrating. So... Uh, and hi, Dr. Elo. Thanks for joining today. Okay. Ah, Lima. I have been to Lima. I actually got real sick. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to go to Machu Picchu and I spent, um, half of the time in Cusco in a little clinic, which was not, not the way I planned to spend my time. But I did love it there. It was beautiful. The days that I was well before that happened were excellent. So it's nice to nice to see you here. Okay. And Alfie's saying, I just use the virtual mic and camera. I'll just always have it on. Yeah, that's a nice option. And I think, well, with loopback, no, I don't. <laughs> because it messes with my mic until I can fix that or find someone who can help me out. Um, I don't have that on all the time. And I see the question here, how many lights are you using right now? So I have, actually, let's do an overhead. I have two lights right now that are 
bouncing off of the curtains. If we go to this view here, I can just toggle this up. So these are my main lights. The two of them uh, reflect off. So that's what's hitting my face. And then over my shoulder, I don't have a camera that shows that. But just back here, I have a light that's filling the room. I do also have, I'm actually, I'm noticing it's hitting my face, which is interesting because I don't have my hair light on today because, <laughs> because my hair is back and it usually bounces on my face <laughs> when my hair is back. But I'm noticing the lights hitting it anyway. So I think it probably got bumped. I did actually have my hair light fall over. So it is clamped right now. Actually, let's do this. Let's show you. I'm going to zoom out. I don't usually do this because I don't like to show this part. Here's a go. So up here, I use a, a clamp. And I just fell down one day. So I don't know if it was being slowly nudged or every time I maybe turned it on and off. Um, so here... That's the one that is filling the room. Also, I have to be careful about how I position it because of the reflection here. This is the fun part where I'm not actually sure <laughs> where I was before. Also, it seems... I don't know. Let's just... Now I'm just... Now I'm just messing with it. Okay. Um... I see a question, Zoom or Skype, but that's not a very detailed question. So <laughs> it depends on what you're trying to do. Maybe if you want to uh, expand the question and the circumstance, that would be helpful. And is it possible to post Zoom chats on the camera? So not at this time, unless you had... So this, this person, what I just did, there having the chat up that is something that is built into ecamm and is connected to youtube so because ecamm is connected i am signed in to youtube through ecamm which is how i can just go live directly from ecamm and it's how i can see your comments in ecamm and i can click on them and bring them up there are also other plugins that you can do that for other streaming software such as obs i'm pretty sure patrick um, from everyday tech has a video about chats for obs but in Zoom, the Zoom chat right now, as far as I can tell, there's no integration. You would have to, those two would have to be connected to each other. And at the moment, I don't believe that Zoom chat has an integration like that that would allow you to bring it up. If I'm wrong and it does exist, let me know. <laughs> but I know, uh, for example, Tom Buck, when I think we were doing a panel and he mentioned that he would actually grab, because he was running classes, he would grab the chat and paste it into as text and or I think you can do that you could also do a quick screenshot and pop the just drag that screenshot onto the screen so you'd be able to see it that takes a little bit of effort and is you know if you're running something if you're running a meeting and you're trying to chat with people it's just not as built in it's not as quick so that would be I, I wouldn't do I wouldn't do that <laughs> I don't think I don't think so. If I had someone helping me and they were actually loading up some questions or they could have it sort of printed where I could just grab it and pop it in, that could be cool. But right now it's not, uh, I don't think there's remote. I don't, I don't think there's still remote support. So unless you had someone maybe has remote control over your computer at the moment, there's not really remote production like that, that would have someone helping. Okay. So Yeah, dual, the dual monitor mode in Zoom, I find, I mean, it is helpful for having that speaker view and what is actually being recorded. Or yeah, if you've connected your Zoom meeting, you're streaming your Zoom meeting, you can see. And so you would know if, if it's not showing the right person or if you've got that spotlight is still stuck. So I think that's actually a great, great way to monitor. All right. And oh, hi, Melanie. It's so nice to see you. Okay. Uh, how's your confidence monitor connected? So I am using my teleprompter. I have a 10 inch monitor. So this is my Btronics monitor and it is connected through HDMI. So I have HDMI out to a, an adapter and that it goes to a USB-C adapter into my hub. 
And that is how I have it set up. At first when I f didn't have my hub and or dock, or, anyway, when I did not have my CalDigit, I actually was with the new M1 MacBook Pro. There is an HDMI cable that you can plug directly in. So at first I did just have straight up HDMI into HDMI and that worked. But once I did get set up with my CalDigit, everything, it's just a one plug operation now. So I just plug in my CalDigit to my laptop and everything is connected. And so in order to do that, I have that going in. My second monitor, however, I did switch to a display port. There it is. It's my brain, it's not, not yet to 100%. Same with my voice, not yet to 100% since... Uh, since getting sick. Um, oh, okay. So Alfie said, which is better? I I have to say I haven't used Skype enough to, and it doesn't have all the things that I personally use it for. So as someone who runs workshops and runs trainings, using, using Zoom works really well for me. We've got the chat feature. I've got the share screen. I've, I've got the quizzes. And, and now it has quizzes, which I have been meaning to do video on that as well, <laughs> but you can, all of that stuff is built in and integrated. And so I just, and I've been using Zoom for three or four years. I, I did an entire program using Zoom before the world shut down. And so, and I've had a Zoom subscription for, I think at least a year before everything shut down. So I've been using it for all the things and I really couldn't say there's a side by side. I just, Zoom works really well for what I do. So I just keep using it. I know there are competitors that are coming out and there, I saw an interesting one yesterday that a Notion uh, team is using. They're uh, Notion consultants. They are using a different one. I cannot remember what it's called right now. Maybe, maybe someone here knows. And I would say that there were some really cool aspects to it, but for my purposes, I'm going to stick with Zoom until I see the functionality. I also just, I know I say this a few times, but I don't really have the time to do the research at the moment. So maybe when I have some capacity to be able to explore, then I'll be able to explore. But at the moment, it's just not high on my list. I've got something that works and, uh, and it's, so I keep using it. All right. Okay. So I see there's a question here. I'm using the Logitech facing me and one off to the side. Should I change this? If it's working, I don't, if it's working, I don't see why not for, and the mic, I mean, I would, if it's not broken, I know that's an old adage, but it's true. Like if you have a setup that is serving you well and people can see you and they can hear you, then I wouldn't go run out changing things. I will say that after using the C920 for a long time, I did invest in my Sony camera and the change was noticeable right away. People were commenting. They said, oh, what, are you, what did you do? It looks so good. There is a difference in quality level. However, it's not necessary if people are hearing you and they can see you and you're, you're, if you are able to reach your goal or the thing you were trying to accomplish with what you've got, then maybe just don't worry so much about it. But if you are thinking, yeah, I really wish I had a higher level of quality, then there are ways that you can increase that quality. You can change up your camera. The microphone situation, I changed because the Yeti was picking up way too much it's it's sensitive and it was picking up conversations in the house from other floors I didn't want that that to me was disruptive it was also really kind of obnoxious to say hey I am going live or I'm running a workshop can you just be quiet for the next two hours thanks that'd be great like that's also disruptive <laughs> so I personally that is why I changed to a dynamic microphone so that it's picking up what's right in front of it and it's not as sensitive so there's that trade-off but if it's working you don't have to. <laughs> so it depends on what your pain point is. And if there's no pain point, then just keep going. That's, that's my opinion. All right. Uh, no, I'm never going to change the clock. <laughs> I, I, well, not never, never say never, 
it, uh, it's too loud. I don't like it. Even though I have a new microphone, I actually find having a stuck clock is nice because I never have to worry about people knowing when I filmed something. It's always stuck at that time. But the main thing is I don't personally want to have to do the work that's required to take down the mount. Uh, I can't think of anything else right now I would want to put up there aside from a clock. Uh, so if, <laughs> if I suddenly feel inspired that I want to take it down and I want to do some like plastering and repainting, then maybe it will come down. <laughs> but it's loud. I don't like it. Maybe if I got a different clock, but then I have the problem of the time. And if you edit and then the clock starts to... Anyway, that's funny. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Okay. So looks like for sharing Zoom chats on the screen, actually having that chat showing up as a source, I would say, is that like a screen share where the chat, so that's where everyone can see the chat. I think though, uh, the earlier question was around, can I bring up one comment from Zoom onto the screen? Sort of like I'm doing right here where you kind of highlight a comment. And I think that's that's a little har ha um, harder. What, uh, what happened to my gray hair? Oh, it's still there. It's just my... <laughs> I, yeah, no, it's uh, my gray hair, the way my gray pattern is, is I've got dark hair on the side and then all my gray hair is sort of on the top. So it's hard, to, it's hard to see when it's back, but as soon as my hair is down, it's gray. It's not gone. I did not dye it. This is just what my hair looks like back. <laughs> but if you go, I think my last video, my hair was down. I think, was that the one where I had, recently I had a Cruella look going on where one side was darker and one side was gray. So it's still there. It has not gone anywhere. All right, um, so I see a question here. How do you keep the Stream Deck profiles from fighting each other when doing a Zoom call using Ecamm? Um, so I, okay, Stream Deck profiles. Oh, I turn off the default. So I don't, I just, I hate the default switching. So both for Stream Deck and for a Loop Deck, I do not have it where it, it automatically switches profiles when you change an application because I do so many demos where I need something to be active in the foreground while I still want to control my scenes. So that's no bueno. So I just turn everything off and I just do it manually. <laughs> so you can manually switch between profiles. And that to me is, that has been the solution. So I would always uncheck switch to that when the application is active. Don't like it. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, what else? Oh, and the angle, so this is an old TV. When I moved into this house, there was a TV uh, pivoting thing, mount, TV mount on the wall, big old bolts and didn't want to take it down. So I just slapped the clock up there. But because I'm faced this direction, I did turn it. So that's why. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Um, oh, what model? So everything's on my gear page, but it's a Sony ZV-1 is the one I'm using. I believe that's what you're referring to. Okay. And I wish Zoom would... Oh, yeah. I wish Zoom would include the ability to zoom and crop the webcam. I use it just to... A hundred percent. I hate, I, like, I know that's a strong word, but really I, I just wish you could adjust. You can go in, you can flip that it, you can say, oh, I want to mirror it or don't mirror it. I can turn on the beauty filter, but I can't just zoom in. That would be so nice. I, I would love that because I would use this camera in front of me to just have the camera source going into Zoom and then I can use my screen share to show my scenes if I want that have me and the stuff because then I get a little duplicate when I'm using the virtual camera. There's a mini virtual camera and then the big virtual camera. I don't love that. That's when I'm screen sharing. Oh, I got to keep my eye on time. <laughs> okay. And oh, yes. Yeah, for microphones, there is you can use AI like Crisp, which will cut out some of that background noise. Also, for those who are using Zoom, Zoom does a pretty good job of noise cancellation. Just you don't want that when you are, when you want original sound. So if you are 
playing, if you bring in, for example, in my Elevate Your Voice workshop, I play some video clips and I want to make sure I have my original sound turned on in Zoom. So when I bring in that virtual microphone and the video plays, that Zoom is not trying to, you know, use its AI to try and buff out background noise because I want that whole clip to be heard. So I have to have my original sound on in Zoom for that whole thing. <laughs> Take down the clock, put up a picture of the clock. That I'd have to get it with 3D. I'd have to put in a frame because I want to hide the mount behind it. Yeah. I don't know if it would feel... Yeah. I can't, now I feel attached to it because it's uh, part of, it's just part of the, what's the term? It's like the background of my, I, it's physically the background, but also it's been such a point of like, hey, your clock's broken, that now I feel like I just need to keep it up there. Um, are there any other virtual camera apps that don't send it to overdrive? I, I haven't tried anymore, but I do believe there are some out there um but they i mean you are running a software and it is creating that so i it'd be hard to find a really low i personally in my experience obs doesn't doesn't do as much <laughs> to the computer as as ecamm uh vmix is very powerful so that one although my my gel was just such a um pos that i couldn't run vmix on it it wasn't powerful enough so i personally found that obs was the least impactful one personally but if anyone out there knows please chime in there all right yes exactly everyone loves the broken clock it's not it's not broken it just doesn't have a battery in it so i feel like my voice is starting to this place is starting to go okay oh okay so the clarification for the zoom bring in the overlay and have it set to one small area and then you can see you can stop the the chat scroll okay that's a that's a really interesting way to highlight it without you having to cut and paste anything yeah that works all right um <laughs> okay the dual screen option in zoom let's see if i can show this because i do still have a zoom open Let's go over to this view and of course I went to the other monitor. So I know this is a little bit small, but the very first thing when you open your settings under general is this, this right here, use dual monitors. So when I click on that, a second screen, so I'm going to close this. I now have two zoom windows. This one doesn't have any controls. It is just the active speaker or whatever is kind of going out, um, whatever everyone can see. So that is the dual monitors. That's what it looks like. And you can place this on your teleprompter or on a second screen. Sometimes I'll place them side by side. So if I'm in a class or a weekend training or something like that, I will have the gallery will be on the bigger one and then the active speaker. Or if they have slides, the slides will show up here if there's a screen share in this window. And then I can see the people or the speaker on the other one. So it's really nice to be able to have that option. And, oh, no, I don't want to do that. But if we, the other thing I want to show you, which, so I'm going to turn this off. I, for screen share, I believe it's here. This is one of my favorite changes that I made. <laughs> Window size when screen sharing. Maintain current size is a game changer if you do not have this changed, it defaults to full screen. So when someone shares their screen, it goes to full screen. So if you're like typing notes about what's happening and then someone shares their screen, suddenly you just get bounced out of it. Maintain current size. Whatever the size of your Zoom meeting is, when they share their screen, it will stay that size. And honestly, that tip is just... I, I'm so happy with that feature. So highly recommend... I don't know how many people are using that or not, but please try it out if you are annoyed by screen sharing taking over your screen. So the lore. Yes, it's part of the lore. I love that. The clock is the... Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. So yes, and the clock is right twice a day. 
And what else? Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Magic Fly and Potato, for sharing. Prism Live Studio for PC in place of OBS. I read a few things that might be easiest on system resources. So, uh, yeah, like, I, you heard it not from me, but you heard it here. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? Yeah, that's, I, it's like one of the best, one of the best things for me to discover. Cause I just kept getting mad and I was like, is there a way to change this? So going and finding that option to just maintain the current size is honestly just one of the greatest things. Yeah. So I really hope that that's helpful. Okay. We're actually over an hour. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to watch this replay when they see that it's, it's an hour, it's not being trimmed, but I am going to add chapters so that you can see where the different questions are so that hopefully someone can come back and you can find it again. This back half is going to take a little bit longer for me to give give chapters, but uh, I will try it. And I want to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. It was not my smoothest stream. I'm just going to blame the fact that I'm not 100% better. And soon I will be having a video explaining the virtual mic. What are the things you need to know? And I do like to hear from you for ideas if there are other things that you are looking for content wise. And yeah, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Always so grateful to have you join me live on Friday. And I will be back same time, same place, barring some sort of random sickness like last week where I just couldn't go live. But <laughs> I'm back. And so hopefully I'll be back again next week. Um, thank you all so, so much. Bye.